As publishers, our focus has really been on the research article for a very long time, but we see the future of this broadening our vision beyond just the research article to research data, which is really the building blocks of research and the evidence behind the published literature, as well as things like code and protocols. So it's vitally important that these are shared openly to create a more equitable research ecosystem and potentially also to help drive a, a fairer research assessment system and a less wasteful research ecosystem. For me, open research is an inevitability in research. It's uh, For a long time, we didn't have the tools to allow researchers to disseminate all of their findings. We were stuck to this uh, printing press type model. And so now we have the tools to achieve open research and move further faster with building on top of the research that's gone beforehand. For a long time, for the last decade, it's been an inevitability. And so that's been very exciting. I think we're seeing a little bit more reticence now with the uh, global uh, viewpoint on collaborating between countries and what have you. But it's important that we have the open research because without the open research, we can't show people that there is, we're going backwards if we start closing things up again and collaborations around the world are slowing. But also we can show that the impact of the research, especially with the dawn of AI, can really move us at a speed that we haven't been able to before and, and the general public can trust the research because it's transparent. It was important to do this report for the quantification of what researchers are actually doing. We've been doing the survey for nine years now and trying to understand what their thoughts are, what their attitudes are, but for the first time we can really look at what they're actively doing and this jump from understanding what people say they're going to do to actually showing what they are doing is very important to try and drive change and understand what's working in making data openly available. So it's really important for us to collaborate with the other actors in the research ecosystem. I think it, we are really interested in what works as an intervention, uh, thinking about what works for a publisher to help promote data sharing in that context. But we all need to work together to actually make this work. And that includes funders, that includes publishers, repositories, government agencies. And this collaboration, I think, is a great example of uh, shining a light on data sharing, promoting data sharing, but also helping to tailor those interventions towards what really works. Uniquely this year, uh, we have several data sources in order to look at what researchers are actually doing and the linkages between peer-reviewed published research papers and data sets being made available. Uh, we've got three different data sources in Dimensions.ai, in uh, Springer Nature's data availability statements, and very interestingly in this Chan Zuckerberg funded data citation corpus, which is an openly available uh, corpus of links between papers and data. And while none of these sources can be seen as a real source of truth uh, in this new, not nascent field, taken together, we can start to look at trends and understand what's happening at the different uh, country level, at the different funder level, and we can slice and dice to see really what's going on with what researchers are actually doing. Yeah, Marcus covered the main points there. I think that, again, this is really a case of improving either just having quantitative or qualitative data. You know, if we take the two things together, that actually gives us the rich kind of insights off the back of these behavioral patterns of what people are actually doing. And that's something you may not get by just looking at pure numbers. I think because it's a unique analysis and it's a new analysis, what it allows us to do is to go to those different sectors, whether it's the funders, whether it's what's happening at the national level, institutions even, and say, this is what's working elsewhere. Maybe you can adopt some of these practices in order to drive change in your particular demographic and we can move the space forward. We hear a lot about fair data, findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable data. And I think everyone's on board for that, but different regions or different funders are executing in different ways and some are having more success than others. And so if we can find out what is successful, then we can advance that for everybody. Yeah, I really hope that this will help focus the conversation as well, as well as bringing this to people's attention is 
help move things from being purely in a policy and discussion sort of phase to which practical interventions specifically work. So this is the kind of thing where we can actually measure and get much more insight if we start to look in detail at regions, at funder interventions, at publisher interventions, around things like policies, what is actually working and what's the impact that we can see from that. In many years, we've looked at the global perspective when we're looking at the state of open data and seeing little increments here and there. And it was only this year with the Global Lens Report that we started to see these country-based differences. And that follows through with the actual quantitative data that we see here as well. We are seeing differences at the country level, uh, and we can start to explain why that is. We can start to dig a little deeper and see who's funding this research and why these practices are different in different regions. Our main focus is countries, but we do uh, dig a little bit into the different uh, ways in which we can splice the data as well with institutions, funders, like I mentioned as well. So there are some key positive success stories, I would say. We can see a drop in the amount of data that's being made available on request from the Spring and Nature's data availability statements. In other areas, we can see some key challenges of where things aren't moving as quickly as we would like. For example, we don't see an equivalent rise in the level of repository uptake. And for example, putting data into repositories tends to be a bit more regional than we think. So it's a really useful data source to help us think, okay, well, which interventions in which places have worked and in what areas are things just kind of staying the same. A really important point around open data and open science is that it doesn't become just the preserve of the global north. Um, and in this, it's quite interesting to see some of the things which Mark mentioned may be a surprise or may not be a surprise. We do see some clustering uh, regionally, but also we see some very strong trends uh, from areas outside the global north. And it's really important, I think, to highlight these as success stories, but also to really analyse what is happening in these areas as they set a model uh, for other regions.